We continue to listen to the Four Noble Truths. First, we have to recite Dukkha Ariya Secha Pali. Can you follow me? Katame Ja Vekhawe Dukkha Ariya Secha Ja Divi Dukkha Charabi Dukkha Maranambi Dukkha Soga Karidewa Dukkha Domana Subhaya Sabi Dukkha Abhiyehi Samyoga Bi Dukkha Piyehi Vibhyoga Bi Dukkha Yam Bejana Lavadi Dambi Dukham Sankai Dena Binju Bada Nekanda Dukham We say together Katamija Vekawe Dukham Riya Sijam Jadivi Dukham Charabi Dogam, Maranambi Dogam, Soga, Paridewa, Doka, Domana Subaya Sabi Dogam, Abiye Isam Yoga Bi Doka, Biye Hi. We be all go be do go. Yam be jan not love at thee. Dam be do gum. Sanke de nam. In you bada nekanda do Translation follow me. And what bakus? <coughs> is the noble truth of suffering. Birth is suffering. Aging is suffering. Death is suffering. Sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and, and excessive despair are suffering. Association with the disliked is suffering. <clears throat> Separation from the liked is suffering. Not to get what one wishes. That also is suffering. In brief, the five aggregates of clinging are suffering. There are, there are 12 Dukkha, <coughs> Chadi, Chara, Marana, Sokka, Vridiva, Dukkha, Domnasa, Upayasa, Abhiyayi, Sambhyoga, Piyayi, Vibhyoga, Yambhaja, Nalavati, Dambi Dukkha, and the last one, number 12, Sankhiti na bhiju parane khanda dukha. So, 12 suffering, Bola is founded in detail. So, 11 types of suffering. Number one, jati, rebirth, suffering, rebirth, arise. Why rebirth arise? Because there is, there are the five groups of grasping, Upadhanikanda. Chara arise, aging arise. Because there are the five groups of grasping, mind and matter. 
If there is no mind and matter, we will not be aging. We will not have old age. When we have Upadhanakanda or mind and matter, we are aging. <clears throat> and Marana, why we die? Because we have five groups of grasping. We have mind and matter, so we die. If there is no body, if there, there, there is no five ag aggregates or gr clinging, we will not be die. We will not die. So 11 types of suffering, starting from jadi, to suffering of not getting what we want arise only because there are the five groups of clinging because they are uh, mind and matter so they arise dependent on these five groups so Buddha is bounded Sanketena Binju Parane Kanadoka. Only one sentence is enough. <clears throat> Five groups of grasping is the truth of suffering. So the aggregates of material and mental formation form the objects of clinging or grasping. They are called Upadhanakanda. How many Upadhanakanda? Five. So five is Pincha. Pincha Upadhanakanda. Pinchu Upadhanakanda. Pincha and Upadhana, when they combined, Pinchu Upadhanakanda. Pincha and Upadhanakanda. Five groups of grasping. You are observing. The group of material form, rupa. So when you practice meditation in kaya, the same. And you are observing vedana, groups of feeling. You are observing sinya, perception. Groups of the perception and number four, sinkara, sinkara, that is groups of mental concomitants, and vinyana, number five, the group of consciousness. <clears throat> so all sentient beings exist as such only. With these five groups forming their sub substantive mass, and we cling to our body. This body is merely an aggregate of rupa. <coughs> material form, but we regard this body as my body. I am permanent, but if meditators observe continuously, you don't see any permanent. <clears throat> you see they are changing and they are impermanent so other people when they do not practice meditation they regard this body as my body i am permanent etc <clears throat> so the group of material form is called the group of grasping upadhanakanda 
So the mental states made up of consciousness and mental concomitant, Chita and Chitisika are also grasped at. This is my mind. My mind is happy. My mind is discouraged. My mind is upset. I'm thinking. My mind is permanent, etc. So the mental states are also known as groups of grasping. It is how attachment occurs on the group of mind and body, rupa and nama as a whole. <clears throat> Meditators carefully attend to the five aggregates subject to clinging or Satipatthana meditation. You are observing the four foundations of mindfulness, all are the same. You are observing the five aggregates as aggregate subject to clinging or you are observing the four foundations of mindfulness or you are observing seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching and knowing. They are the same. <clears throat> you are observing the five aggregate subject to clinging. So what is clinging? It means firmly holding on to something. When clinging to something, you take hold of it and do not let it go. So Buddha teach that clinging is of two kinds. Clinging is a mental state, upadana, and with that mental state, we cling to objects. Suppose we see something beautiful. When something is beautiful, we desire it. We have a strong craving to possess it. In this case, we cling to the object by strong craving. So in other words, things can be the objects of strong desire, strong craving or clinging. A wrong view can also cause clinging to objects. Sometimes we have wrong view about objects. We think that these namarupa are permanent. So we, pos we possess a self or soul, or we may have wrong views about ourselves, we may think we have a soul, or we may take being to be self or soul. So when we apply these kinds of wrong view to objects, we are clinging to them. So we cling to an object with strong craving or wrong view. Anything that we can cling to, either with strong craving or wrong view, is called aggregates, subject to clinging. What are the things we can cling to? They are the things we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, or think of. So we can cling to everything in the world, either by strong view or by strong craving. Tana and deity. So when we say, this is I, 
we are clinging by wrong view. And when we say, this is my hand, this is my body, this is my leg, etc., we are clinging by craving. But the things we cling to are called aggregates, kanda. So they are called aggregates because they are understood in groups. A group here does not mean a group of different things. It means a group of aspects of a things. For example, a visible object, there are 28 kinds of matter and this, that visible object is just one unit of rupa or matter. One unit of matter is not a group of many things. It is one thing, yet it is called in kanda aggregates. It is because one unit of matter can be the past, the matter can be of the future, the matter can be of the present. So with the grouping together of these three aspects of time, that one unit of matter becomes an aggregate, that is Rupakanda. And also within a feeling, feeling is just one mental state, one mental factors, but that one mental factor is also called aggregates and aggregates because it can be, feeling can be of the past, feeling can be of the future, feeling can be of the present. Sometimes you have unpleasant feeling, very painful, um, unpleasant feeling in the past. And then in future, the neutral feeling in the future and present, pre <clears throat> pleasant sensation, pleasant feeling in the present. So it can, Feeling can also be internal and external. Feeling can be cross and it can be subtle and so on. Because of the many varying aspects that it possesses, feeling within us is called an aggregate. So you have now seen that just one unit of matter is called an aggregate. And just one mental state is called an aggregate. Even one unit of matter is called an aggregate. Technically, they each are called an aggregate. So there are five such aggregates mentioned in Buddhism. So as a meditator, you're very familiar with them and with their names. So we continue with the five aggregates, form aggregates, Rupakanda, Feeling aggregates within a kanda, perception aggregates, senior kanda, volitional formation aggregates, sankara kanda, and consciousness aggregates, vinyana kanda. So it is better to say meta aggregates rather than form aggregates. 
because every unit of matter is called matter aggregates. Matter is something that changes with adverse condition like heat, cold, hunger, and so on. So matter, matter change. So matter can be found outside in the mountains, in trees, in living beings, and all material phenomena. So you all know that the feeling aggregates is the feeling of pleasure. Sukha Vedana, the feeling of displeasure, Dukkha Vedana, and neutral feeling, Upaka Vedana. These feelings are called the feeling aggregates, Vedana Kanda, although feeling is only one mental factor, it is called an aggregate because it is a division into past, present, future, and many other aspects. So another one is senior kind of perception aggregates. Perception is a mental state that makes marks of an object Whenever you encounter or experience a new object, this mental state makes a mark of that object in your mind. So when you experience the object again, you will recognize what it is. That is what is meant here by perception. The next one is Sinkara Kanda, Volitional Formation Aggregates. It is difficult to understand. According to Bidama, there are 52 mental states. Feeling, Vedana is one mental factor. Sinya perception is another mental factor. The remaining 50 mental states are collectively called volitional formation aggregates because this group is headed by a mental factors called volition or chedana in Bali. The word formation is the translations of Bali word sinkara. Sinkara can mean both producer and product. Something that produces something is called Sinkara. And that which it produces or which is conditioned by it, it also called Sinkara. So Sinkara has at least two meanings, the mega and that which is made. So in the in the context of Sinkara Kanda, volitional formation aggregates, it means maker or it makes something. Here you must understand the word Sinkara in its active sense. So now you are listening to the talk. And Sinkara is urging, listen, listen. And then you are listening to the talk. And after the talk, you don't want to listen. You finish and get up, get up. So that is the maker, Sinkara. So that mental day, you capture it urging something, it is producing, producing other, other states. And then Sinkara makes you sit upright and listen carefully and attentively. So that is your Sinkara, wholesome Sinkara. 
that is mental state. So in another context, sabhi singara nature, all singaras are impermanent. So the word singara means all things that are conditioned, all things that are made. So here the meaning is quite different from singara meaning those that make and which is translated as formation. There is no other words to adequately convey the meaning carried by the original Pali words. So the 50 mental states are collectively called Sinkara Kanda. Sinkara aggregates or volitional formation aggregates. So volition or Chedana, Sinkara, mindfulness, Siddhi is also Sinkara, understanding the true nature, Namarupa is Sinkara, attachment, Loba is also Sinkara, hatred, anger, Tosa is also Sinkara, delusion, not, not understanding the true nature is also Sinkara. These mental states you, you can discover during the practice of meditation. You are observing, so there are many sankara, sometimes wholesome in the practice or during the practice of meditation, all your sankara are mostly wholesome. But if we do not practice, sankara are wholesome, mostly. So all of these are collectively called Sinkara because they do something. Doing something is not you, not me, not the person, not the individual, not the man, not the woman. Who is this that do something? That is Sinkara. So during the practice of meditation, you very, very careful whatever you do, you know it, you capture the sankara. Want to get up, want to walk, want to see, want to breathe, etc. So all the volitional activities, sankara you are capturing. When you are mindful, you capture thoroughly. So when we see something, a kinds of mental activities that makes seeing complete takes place. So this kinds of mental activity is called sinkara. Another aggregate is vinyanakanda, consciousness aggregates. Consciousness is awareness of the, the object. Here yeah, it must be understood in its technical sense, not as it is understood popularly. So in Abhidhamma, consciousness means just a mere awareness of the object. Consciousness is always accompanied by Vedana, feeling, senior perceptions and other factors from the volitional formation aggregates. So there are five aggregates, meta aggregates, feeling aggregates, perception aggregates, volitional formation aggregates, and conscious aggregates. And when they are objects of clinging, they are called aggregates of clinging, aggregates subject to clinging, or aggregates, objects of clinging.
So at the moments of C, these Uvaranekanda are there. Now you are noting when you see something, you see, you know, seeing, seeing. So to consider each separate phenomena in detail, the Upadana Khanda or mind and matter is conspicuous every time we see an object. The real one is Upadana Khanda or mind and matter. It is real one. So to see this reality, you observe very closely. And the Upadana is prominent on every occasion of hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and thinking. At the moment of seeing what you, when you not seeing, seeing what you capture, you do your scale, you can capture the seeing eye sensitivity by which you see, I see through the eye. What you see? You see not the man, not the woman, you see the sight, visible object. And also if you have scale, you can capture the seeing consciousness so seeing eye sensitivity, object of sight and seeing consciousness are quite conspicuous when you not seeing. So in this consciousness of seeing are comprised pleasant or unpleasant feeling or seeing. Sometimes you are fortunate, you are lucky, you, you, when you see pleasurable object and then pleasant sensation, pleasant feeling, and sometimes due to the object, ugly, unpleasant feeling or seeing. And then perception or recognition of the object seen and to see this, there is effort, or you bend your mind to accomplish the act of seeing. What seeing arise? Because you want to see. If you don't want to see, only you want to see the rising falling, you don't see, you don't pay attention to the object. And you close your eyes, you don't want to see, you ignore everything, and you close your eyes and then see the rising and falling. But now you want to see. So there is making effort and you bending your mind to accomplish the act of seeing, that is Sankara, and the knowledge of knowledge that an object just seen. So that is Vinyana. When we do not practice meditation or our concentration and vipassana knowledge not yet advanced, and if we do not appreciate the true nature of impermanence, etc., we remain attached to our eyes and the object of sight. 
So unmindful people regard the clear eyesight as this is my eye. My eye is eye sensitivity is permanent. And when the unmindful people see the body and limbs, the attachment arises. Oh, I see my own body. This is my hand. I can do everything. My practice doing very well. I'm a good, good meditators. And it exists permanently. And unmindful people see other people and they appear as a person, a creature enduring lusting. So because of such arousal of attachment to them, eye sensitivity, the object of sights are called Rupa Upadhanekanda. So in addition to pleasant feeling and unpleasant feeling in seeing an object, there is also a neutral feeling. So what is concerned with wholesome neutral feeling is included in pleasant feeling. So because of the akusala, uh, because of the kusala wholesome this in the past, now neutral feeling you encounter. And what is concerned with unwholesome neutral feeling is included in unpleasant feeling. Because of the unwholesome deeds in the past, they have come neutral feeling. or unpleasant feeling. So both pleasant and unpleasant feeling give rise to attachment. I see beautiful scenery. It is my pleasant feeling. This pleasant feeling is everlasting. I'm very well. I'm headache. i terrible. So causing attachment in this way, pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling on seeing an object is called Vedana Upadana Kanda. Exercising your will to see an object is called Chedana Volition. So in the vocabulary of the text, it is termed incitement or exhortation or urging. Something is urging, see it, see it, and you want to see, you want to see what it is. So ex incitement, exhortation or urging, but will or volition is expressed its meanings quite clearly. So Manasikara, goes along with Chedana, Manasikara is pondering or bending your mind towards an object. And Pasa, contact. And but Chedana and Manasikara are the predominating factors. So we have, we can mention only these two. So there is also attachment towards them as I'm good meditators, I'm enduring, etc. So these two mental concomitants of willing and bending the mind involved in the acts of seeing is called Sinkara Upadana Khanda. So by Sinkara, it is meant conditioning. 
So in the case of seeing, it means bringing about condition to accomplish the acts of seeing. And the last, the last uparanekana is vinyana. Vinyana is just knowing that an object is seeing, is seeing consciousness, which is also attached to as I see, I know, the seeing eye is everlasting. So because of the possibility of such attachment, that consciousness is called Vinyana Upadana Khanda. So at the moments of at the moment of seeing due to your skill, you can capture these phenomena. Phenomena they are just momentary appearing. And due to your skill, you can capture these five. Kanda. So Masi Sierra have this aphorism. Can you can you look at the paper? At the moment of seeing, the eye and the object of size are Rupa Ubadana Kanda. And the pleasant or unpleasant feeling of seeing is Vedana Ubadana Kanda. Recognizing or remembering the object of seeing is Sinya Ubadana Kanda, exercising the will to see and turning the attention towards the sight is Sinkara Ubadana Kanda. As knowing that an object is seen is Vinyana Ubadana Kanda. So you sometimes you may you may capture pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling when you are seeing or eye sensitivity through this eye I see or you recognize something that is senior and something is urging to see the, the sight that is Sankara and just knowing an object is seen is Vinyana Upadana so, Masi Sera aphorism, can you follow me? At the moment of seeing, the eye sensitivity and the object of sight are Rupa Ubadana Kanda. The, ple the pleasant or unpleasant feeling of seeing. is Vedana Upadana Kanda. Recognizing or remembering the object of seeing is Sinya Upadana Kanda. Exercising the will to see and turning the attention towards the sight is Sinkara Upadana Kanda. Just knowing that an object is seen is Vinyana Upadana Kanda. Bora instruction is Dete Deta Matam Boisati. When you see, you have to know seeing. And with regard to what is seen, yeah, we be only the seeing. You must just add what is seen. Don't add anything of your eye, of your own. Do not put any value on the seeing. Just know the seeing, seeing, so that your concentration gets strengthened and you can capture these phenomena clearly and they are appearing at that moment and disappearing. And when meditators have a advanced level, the experience they realize they're seeing is just the phenomena 
appearing and disappearing. So to know seeing as seeing every time an object is seen is to enable yogis to see the five groups of mind and meta as they really are. So now you know the instruction is instruction is when you see you have to know seeing is for what to capture the five groups of Rupa and Nama as they really are. And having seen them to remain at the stage of just seeing and not become to not become attached to them as I see by seeing or seeing is permanent, pleasant, good, etc. So not to cling to these aggregates, you have to note immediately and continuously seeing, seeing, so that you can capture these phenomena clearly. So to understand the purpose of noting every phenomena, Mahasisiyaro have that fundamental principle. So by contemplating what is Vipassana meditation develop? To develop our meditation, Vipassana meditation knowledge, what we have to contemplate? So if you want to develop your meditation, you have to contemplate, you have to note the five aggregates as they really are. You observe the five aggregates, you observe the mind and matter, you observe the kaya with Chitta dharma, body, feeling, consciousness and dharma object. But you don't see these phenomena as they really are. because your meditation is not advanced yet and you don't see these aggregates as they really are. And then Masi Sera asked this question, when and for what purpose they should be noted? So these five aggregates should be noted at the moment of arising. For what purpose? To cut off attachment. You have to note these five aggregates at the moment of arising. So during the practice, you don't care anything your duty is only noting, noting very immediately. You don't care anything. You ignore everything. You cut off everything. And then you just noting at the moment of the arising. And then you can cut off your attachment. If we're not mindful, what happened? Masisiaro mentioned, if you fail to note at the moment of the arising, it will open the way to your attachment to these five aggregates as permanent, pleasant, or safe. So you stay think that these Namarupa are permanent, pleasant, or safe because your mindfulness is not continuous and, and precise. So if you note the five aggregates every time they arise, what is the result? You can remove 
your attachment if you know the five aggregates every time they arise. So in this way, you can develop your clear insight as to their impermanence and satisfactoriness or suffering. So that is Mazi Siaro, the fundamental principle of Vipassana meditation regarding the five aggregates. And the hearing. At the moment of hearing, obviously, hearing is just ear, which can hear easily. By which you hear the song with eardrums. Only just I hear from this ear sensitivity. And obviously, there is the sound. If there is no sound, you don't hear. There is sound which is quite audible and consciousness, which, which knows that a sound has been heard. So sometimes you have, you have pleasant feeling and sometimes unpleasant feeling in the conscious of your hearing. And then the sound you perceive, perception of the sound. And then why you hear, because you will and you want to hear the sound, willing, exertion, and you turn your mind towards the sound to accomplish the act of your hearing. If you don't want to listen, you don't hear the sound. You want to go back to the rising falling, so you don't pay attention to the sound, you don't hear. And just knowing that a sound has been heard, so when you hear the sound, if you do not, if you have no opportunity to practice mindfulness, or if you forget to note, so you have no knowledge of reality as it is, is truly is, so that we become attached to all phenomena prominent at the moment of hearing. So because of the liability to such attachment, eardrums and the material body of the sound are called Rupa Upada Nekanda. So hearing, sometimes pleasant feeling, sometimes unpleasant feeling, it is Vedana Upada Nekanda. And there is perception, you recognize the sound. The perception of sound is Sinya Upadanakanda. Why you hear the sound? Because you will to hear the sound. You turn your mind towards the sound, that is Sinkara Upadanakanda. Just knowing that a sound is a sound has been heard is called Vinyana Upadanakanda. So meditators are very skillful. Meditators are very skillful to note hearing, hearing, because there are many sounds. Some sounds you are not agreeable. Some sounds are very agreeable, agreeable or disagreeable. You are observing the sound very, very carefully. So Mahasi Sierra aphorism, we have to recite. So at the moment of hearing, you can capture these, these phenomena, these Upadanakanda. Can you follow me? At the moment of hearing, 
the ear drums and the sound wave are rupa ubadane kanda. The pleasant or unpleasant feeling of hearing is Vedana Upadana Khanda. Recognizing or remembering the objects of hearing is Sinya Upadana Khanda. Exercising the will to hear or turning the attention towards the sound is Sinkara Upadana Khanda. Just knowing that a sound is heard is Vinyana Upadana Khanda. So with regard to what is heard, there will be only the heard. You must stop just as what is heard. You do not add anything of your own. Do not put any value on the sound and do not put any color. It is ugly sound or sweet sound. Don't do it. Just note the sound as it is. You capture the sound very well, clearly, and the sound wave disappear very immediately. And regarding the sound, there is no attachment, no anger, etc. And you are, you have no attachment to the sound. You, regarding the sound, you have no problem. Bad news, good news, every sounds, every news. There will be no problem for you when you really mindful regarding the sound. So we will continue tomorrow. We have to stop our discourse for today. By practicing vipassana meditation, by observing every phenomena occurring at the six and doors, by noting, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and knowing, may you capture the five upadhanekanda, rupa upadhanekanda, vidana upadhanekanda, Sinya Ubarane Kanda, Sinkara Ubarane Kanda, and Vinyana Ubarane Kanda clearly, and may you remove all your attachment and all your anger regarding these phenomena. May you be liberated from all suffering. May you realize the real peace in the very near future.